everything is changing so fast that, that content really is, is the 20th century way of looking at it. So uh, Einstein said, and I looked up this on my phone, um, <laughs> he said, never memorize anything you can look up in a book. But in the 21st century, never memorize anything that you can look up on your phone, including Einstein quotes. So I knew he said something uh, uh, applicable, and I went and I found it, and I didn't have to memorize it, but it's there. And, um, and that's, that's the age we're dealing with. Like, I don't know how people are going to play Trivial Pursuit in the next 10 or 20 years. Because um, no one has to remember that trivial stuff. And I think that's a neat opportunity to turn our brain power to problem solving, which we really, really need to do. Because we've done a lot of tinkering with our civilization and with our planet, and we've created some the need to do some problem solving now to perfect our civilization and to ensure the sustainability of the ecosystems that support us. And we need to be problem solvers to be able to do that. And we need to be incredible collaborators to do that. We need to be communicators to bring people along. Those are all of the competencies that are that are relevant. And then I think the you know the outcomes that we need to prepare people to participate in are around productivity and innovation, obviously, in our economy as we know it today everything from labor force participation to designing the black box we're going to bolt on tailings ponds to stop having to defend ourselves to the world about water and the oil sands and being able to say, no, we're problem solvers, and then take that black box and go sell it to other mining operations around the world, improve the environment, and create prosperity in our province. We need people who can do that sort of thing. So it's not just labor force participation. It's creating the economy of tomorrow for us to participate in. And, and ensure our long-term prosperity in transition to something beyond today's resource economy. Um, second, we need people who are making good choices so that, and, and are equipped and have had the right brain development, the right nutrition and everything else so that the social determinants of their health are, are better than the social determinants of this generation because people are talking about how this generation of kids is going to have a shorter life expectancy than their parents because their nutrition is lousy in a lot of cases. They're not getting enough exercise. And that's a bad generalization because there's, there's outliers on all sides. But if with the better social determinants of health, we're going to get that higher productivity. We're going to, uh, but more importantly, we're going to have uh, lower poverty. Uh, uh, lower homelessness. Um, my policing budget is going to get under control again um, because we've got people making better choices. Uh, and, and you know, another key competitive advantage for Alberta and for Canada is a great public health care system. Yes, it could use improvement. Yes, it could use more money. But if we want to make it sustainable, we're not just going to throw more money at an increasingly unfit population. We need to actually get the population to be making healthier choices, healthier habits, eating better, getting more exercise, basic social determinants of health that have all these cascading benefits and other public policy areas from law and order to economic development uh, to, uh, and so on. And then we need people to be active citizens to take ownership of these things. So productivity, social determinants of health, and citizenship as well so people can actively participate in decision making in their community, take leadership at the micro and at the macro. And I think that one goes without saying. But then I think the last thing is we need to, to become adaptable and resilient in ways that we haven't needed to be because of that pace of change. And whether it's uh, social upheaval and transformation. You know, in a city like Edmonton, we have the fastest growing urban Aboriginal population in the country. And it's a demographic that is very, very different. So we're thinking about. Um, the colonial population, frankly, which is an aging population with a lot of baby boomers. And there's a lot of public policy conversation about what are we going to do about the aging population. When in Aboriginal communities, 50% um, of them are under 25, and it's the fastest growing population in the country. And we're not talking about how do we make sure those people are successful. And if those people aren't successful, we get a couple generations of setback, again, with the indigenous community, which is not what we need. We need to be going in the other direction. And I was just, uh, I had occasion to have dinner with John Ralston Saul and Adrian Clarkson at a military event. They were here for the PPCLI 100th. And John Ralston Saul was telling me it's the one piece of unfinished business in this country is, is um, greater success and inclusion for Aboriginal people <coughs> while respecting their distinct, um, their distinct status. And he, he put it a really neat way. He said, these kids are going to be successful with or without our help. We can decide whether we want to be part of the solution or whether we want to continue to stand in their way. 
So that requires active citizenship on all of our parts. It requires adaptability and resilience. It's going to impact social determinants of health, which is going to lead to greater productivity. So everyone should be able to buy into this kind of work. And yes, it's easy to say at the macro, it's way harder to, to deliver these things at the ground floor. But I think the approach uh, to competencies is going to better prepare our kids to be engaging in those ways in the big questions that we need to solve for a civilization to prosper into the future and to also tackle some of the tough questions around uh, the environment and, and ecosystems and also adapting to climate change, which in the case of the city of Edmonton, uh, we're going to need to raise your, your drainage rates a whole lot to upsize our drainage system to deal with the storms that come with climate change. So because we didn't mitigate climate change and stop it, we now have to focus on things like adaptation. We should still try to slow it down, level it off if we can, but we're stuck with now having to do $2 billion retrofit on our drainage system. So we need engineers and problem solvers uh, and leaders who can communicate the need to make that investment, design the solutions, and yes, we need people <coughs> running the equipment safely and effectively um, uh, to do the work. And so the education system, I think, is adapting to hopefully prepare all the kind of people we need to do that kind of work in a, in a just hyper-change environment in the years ahead.